So um, this was, uh, you know, I agree with everybody on the last team that I learned a lot. This is coded in EXTJS. I had not had any experience with. I never knew EXTJS existed. The um, uh, Eclipse Juno, I thought Eclipse was Eclipse. Eclipse Juno is a web application uh, type of thing, so I used that. I had seen Google Docs before, but I had no idea how powerful it was, especially with teamwork. It was instrumental. I don't know how we could have. It would have been very difficult to work without the Google Docs. <coughs> and just setting up the whole process for me to be able to access the Predos website was new. We used port redirection to get to the Noesis server and the Nimbus server, and I had no idea about how those databases were stored on Nimbus servers and things. And uh, the teamwork thing, I had worked on teams before, not very often though, and the thing was just came back to me again was how, how people depend on the others for uh, me doing my work, and I depended on them doing their work. And Delroy Cameron, the mentor, the PhD uh, person with us, he kept us focused on the outcome and he encouraged our individual work. And uh, he was just really good about keeping the meetings focused on what we needed to do. And it was really good to meet the researchers at the CITAR team when we presented this, just to see the way that they wanted to see this and the interest that they had and how they were going to use the data. And um, this project was particularly meaningful to me because my nephew died of multi-drug toxicity, which is exactly what this is uh, hoping to somehow uh, alleviate or research. So that was exciting to, to know that the researchers are discovering more about how prescription drugs actually um, are used for self-medication. And now Revathy will tell about her project experience. Hi, Sophie. Pedos was a great learning experience for me. Uh, since it was an existing web application, we had to dive into the code to understand the flow of the application and uh, integrate it with the uh, features that we worked on in the best possible way. On my part, I worked mainly on the backend modules and writing all the servlets and uh, working with the Lucene index and the database. I got the opportunity to work on Virtuoso and uh, Sparkle for getting all the drug names from the drugbank.ca website. Uh, I also got the opportunity to read, to read papers written on uh, Fritos, which in fact helped us write our own report in the format of our workshop paper. <coughs> okay, thanks, Rafi. Uh, we need to move on. Uh, just one question. Um, uh, Mary, what did you specifically learn in the programming, software, technological aspects? The, um, I think probably what I learned most was how uh, complicated things can be and yet it, it really tracks, it's, it reminded me kind of like a scavenger hunt. You do this thing here which leads you here and that leads you here and yet it all connects together and um, and it works out fine. The question was, though, that's what it was. the question was, uh, like, uh, you know, like previous group, uh, did you learn some new technology? Did you uh, improve your understanding or knowledge of some existing yes. programming skills? Was it a different kind of programming than what you've done before? You know, where, where, yeah. where did you mature in the sense of a software engineer or programmer? Right. Or that the EXTJS, I think, is is where I learned the most of it because it is it is different than anything that I had done before. Okay. All right. Great job, guys. Thanks. I, I had already received the comments from the Roy, uh, and you know, so those of you who had mentors, uh, I have talked to them and. Uh, uh, so I, I, you know, I should make it on the board for that. Great, wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, how is life? Uh, sorry? How is life? How is life? Uh, oh, life is great. I'm back home and it's amazing to be in India. And I wanted to thank you once again for letting me get the presentation on this slide. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's great to be back home. Alright, bye. You got one side in there, man. That's the side of the chrome to sync it up.
right, so my name is Kyle Ayersman. I'm Kirk And our project was to make a campground website. We were approached at, Aaron was actually approached at work for someone to work with that just purchased a campground. And the current website was really outdated, so she was wanting something newer. And So the is basic the, requirements. What is the old one? They actually took down the old one. Oh, okay. The previous owner decided that it was their content, although it had been bought from them, so they took it down. So this is what's currently up right now. It's like all just static content, okay. all the rates and contact. So what she was wanting was a contact form to be able to contact uh, forum for members only to kind of talk about stuff they did like over weekends and stuff. She didn't want that to be public then. And a gallery, so different albums. And I guess we just go into more detail about each tab. So I do want to explain it. So the idea with the forum was um, exclusivity. Um, she didn't want public members to be able to view the forum. So if Camper Bob had gotten completely drunk over the weekend, didn't want it to show off his pictures of the weekend. He could post it to that and nobody would be able to see it but seasonal campers. That is, campers who go there from, from April to October and stay there pretty much uh, throughout those months. So the idea of... So basically what it allows you to do is post images and text to a pretty bland form at the moment. So there's two different types of users and the login, as we showed the user login and password. So that an admin user and an admin user, admin users have complete control over all posts and comments on here. They're able to delete anybody's posts and anybody's comments. And your normal users can only delete your own posts and comments. Um, so you go create a post, title, and choose an image. Yeah, they had 
they had like a bunch of sage and a high. You just go down through there and start okay. the so, okay. And then I made more Yahoo pipes for this attractions tab. So when you go in here, you can select restaurants and distance between like 10 and 20. Is there any mesh up here? What's that? Mesh? Yeah. Okay. And then right here you can see where it displays the links. And it'll just link to uh, Yahoo search. And then it'll give you the address and phone number. And there's just a couple of cars. Uh, grocery, and you click show map and it'll display a map. So that way you kind of get a general flow of where things are around you. Because a lot of people are probably just visitors to this, they're not familiar with the area. I was also going to make some more when I get more time to add in here. This contact <laughs> just enter your name. Right now, I have it hooked up to my email. Um, I don't know if you want me to show you that or not to prove that works, but it works. And then after this presentation, we're going to go over her email. But that's something she wanted. I don't know if you want to get up. Um, my, what I generally contributed to the team was I built this HTML. It was pretty much handwritten, most of it. And uh, I used some programs to design stuff and looked at some templates. I did a lot of studying on how websites were made as far as like the tabs. So I kind of learned how to do that myself and then I just programmed all the tabs and the design. And then one of the things I focused on with Aaron's help was the gallery tab. And what this does, right now all the pictures they have um, in a table on the database, they're stored with a caption, they're stored in um, albums. And what you can do is you can click on, this is the albums, it sends all the albums through and you can display the albums. When you click on the albums, it loads through JSON all the pictures in that album. So you can kind of navigate through. What we're going to do in the future is allow the admins to post pictures and it'll automatically post them to the database table. That way you don't have to do any backhand work. It's all done on the website. Show more about the uh, forum. Of course, pictures of the forum. I guess we didn't mention that, but you can also <coughs> post pictures on the forum as well, not just text. So you can add files and stuff. So basically, what I learned is I never had any HTML experience until this class. So I learned a lot about HTML through the projects we did, but this reinforced it even more. And then I learned the Yahoo Pipes, which isn't a whole lot to figure out, but there's a lot of cool things you can do with them, and that's what I learned. There's kind of big world you go into that. And I used JavaScript and PHP for the contact form, so that's other stuff I learned. Uh, yeah, coming into this class, I didn't really know any of these technologies or anything, so the projects I kind of worked through, I didn't learn a, a whole lot about how they worked in the projects, I just wanted to make them work. And when I got into this, I learned a lot more about how the stuff works together and how um, you, know, you can run a whole website using JavaScript and use PHP. And so I did a lot of the JavaScript work and learned a lot of what <coughs> do with JavaScript as well as debugging and writing the HTML and stuff, having those two work together <coughs> on the front end. So I did a bunch of back end stuff for this time right now. We set up, we set up also, we, first we started with a temporary free server, and then Tuesday we moved it to a GoDaddy server. So we're going to set up a yeah. server, and also get the code on the server, setting up the database on the server, and then also doing the PHP calls uh, between the database and the client side, giving up the JavaScript and stuff like that. And all that was good as well. So with the temporary server, it kind of set us back a little bit. For me, it was I couldn't test the contact form, and also the Yahoo pipes would not work at all on our temporary server. You had to purchase it, so I couldn't really test any of this until we ported it to GoDaddy, which luckily it all worked, so, <laughs> so that worked out well. Um.
there was a celebration with your uh, uh, Um, we did all that just right. I mean, Curtis did most of it, but me and him met him, uh, 
a couple times. And that was just all code and then uh, like Notepad. So we didn't realize that there's programs like Dreamweaver. So yes. that's what he discovered and that's how he started developing the second one. So if we started with Dreamweaver from day one, the look and feel would probably be, yes. I would think at least twice as good. Yes, yes. And those are very, very important to have the right graphics tools and uh, those things. I mean, or you can, you know, the, uh, Adobe has a program for developing websites and you can do amazing looking websites. Uh, so, so yeah, that's kind of subset. Uh, 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 you can kind of keep the same. The program is necessary for all the functionality that you need and have. You can just change the whole look and feel and interfaces and uh, you know, uh, like for example, when you get a form, uh, you don't need, you don't have that borders. You know, if you, you know, look okay. at anything in and you have. Um, so those are the things that you can uh, move on to the next time. Or, in the future you may work in a project where somebody else is supposed to do that. You know, and you do the back you know, yeah. <laughs> which is also okay. Um, already, anything else you want to say? Good. So, um, not a lot about what our uh, project uh, is doing has changed since uh, midway, um, as far as functionality goes, um, getting uh, processing of the information. Um, what has changed is uh, the, the login process. <coughs> Basically, <coughs> through testing we found that uh, for the site to be effective at all, basically we had to make sure that, that the user logged into Facebook and either allowed for navigation uh, or location tracking or, or was given explicit uh, command to enter a location uh, because we can't get any information from the events uh, service without a location. Um, so I'm going to start here. This is a uh, Without us logged in um, with pop-ups block and all that, um, you can refresh the page. All right, so basically, um, in order for the user to log into Facebook, uh, you know, we have the login button in the upper right-hand corner, but we wanted to explicitly tell the user that they needed to log in. And, uh, and what happens is Facebook automatically pulls up a pop-up, but if you have a pop-up blocker, you won't get that uh, dialog box. So we made uh, a little uh, dialogue here that'll tell the user to hopefully allow for pop-ups. Allow the pop-ups. And now when we refresh the screen, it should pull up the Facebook uh, login. Go ahead and log in now.
I don't know why I asked this again sometimes, but it does. Um, from here, occasionally Facebook doesn't like to close its windows. Um, I thought I turned off location services. So assuming that the user has the locations blocked, we're not giving us permission uh, to locations. Alright. So if and the user hasn't given us uh, has denied uh, navigation services. We'll bring up this box, and in this box, uh, we configured it to either enter uh, just your, your zip code, or you can enter a full address, which is uh, actually preferable. When you do it, um, enter just your zip code, what it will do is uh, Google will return just the center of, of the zip code location. If you do the full address, though, it will send back the latitude and longitude so that when we get the information back here, and uh, we bring up our, our map. Now when we get directions, it will actually get accurate directions from the pinpoint location. Um, if you didn't, we uh, allow up here to enter your actual home location so that you can get an accurate map. Um, this little thing here uh, we did before it pulled up the screen and it left all the other area of the opacity the same and it kind of blended in. So we made it shade out the back so it was clear that you were getting the, the map and you could distinguish from the surrounding area. Um, also, this navigation bar here uh, that was changed before all of the uh, events were piled in this window. And if you see how many genres it returned for, because we went through and wiped a bunch of artists to get as much as we could. Um, before it would pull up. How do we populate how do we populate all this? Um, the events, okay, this basically, <coughs> after the navigation is uh, confirmed that you have a, a valid zip code, um, Facebook is called uh, to get the likes. Then the likes are sent to Last.fm and sent back. All of the information from Last.fm, all the genres, are, are basically just stored in an array. And that populates all of these boxes here. All of these buttons. The first one. So you are saying that this is specifically populated for the particular user? Yes, from their Facebook likes. It's a, a list of artists they like on Facebook. Right. I, that's fantastic. Uh, then, then, then you, I, you know, why didn't why didn't you make this into Facebook application? Um, actually, we we uh, I've currently started working on an uh, iOS application for it. Okay. And uh, he's uh, working on an Android application. Okay. And uh, so we're planning on integrating all that, as well as creating a, a mobile version of this website. Okay. Um, anyway, so so you get back um, all of these genres. Um, the first one is actually sent as events, and they give us back the information. The rest of them are not. Well, if you make those into applications, uh, I, is that going to allow you to get the Facebook likes also? Yes. Because they will just uh, they yeah. have to sign in as a Facebook user. The uh, iOS. Uh, for iOS, anyway. Uh, yeah, that much is. Yeah. They, 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 Facebook provides an SDK for that yeah. that you just incorporate into the project, and it, you know, pretty much takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. um, so originally, like I was saying, it, it populated a huge mass of, of information here in the center console, and if you wanted to get to Punk, you'd have to scroll down maybe 60, in, you know, blocks of information. Show which uh, <coughs> you a system diagram. Um,
serious this is to find here. Um, but the, uh, basically the first uh, genre that's brought back, we, we do the query for that and get that information back. The rest of it we don't. And that allows us to, uh, so that when the user picks a, a different genre, <coughs> It, it goes here. Instead of having it go back and submit a query again, all of the data is actually stored in another array. So if he goes back to Folk and Traditional, instead of calling the API again, it will just call the data that's stored there. And you can see a, a, a vast difference in uh, the time it takes to load the, the already stored data to uh, a, new, a, uh, a new request. It's not terribly fast, but it's, it's a little faster. Also, um, their API has a call limit of 200 calls per day for non-commercial or for uh, for non-paid accounts. Non accounts. And so, in our testing, when we were running, uh, you know, our site with a whole bunch of genres loaded, uh, if you had some error or just even a CSS or HTML problem, you'd run through the 200 real quick. So this this eliminated a, a, a big problem for us. Um, as well as giving the user a little uh, better view of, uh, you know, what they have op options available. So. <coughs> um, as far as uh, what I've learned in this, one of the, the biggest things, is aside from the technology, uh, you know, we did a little bit of JavaScript jQuery stuff in here, but this is massive JavaScript jQuery. Uh, the whole thing. It's if you disable JavaScript, the site would be virtually useless. There's uh, absolutely no server side scripting on our part running this. It is entirely client side. Uh, aside from the, the one key, uh, the mail script. Yeah, Other than that, yeah, yeah. that's. Um, but the, the big the big problem with with doing that is for, from a design standpoint is we make probably there are six different places that we get uh, that we do asynchronous. Uh, queries from and getting those to all sync up right so that you all have the information in the place that you need it when you need it is uh, it's it definitely <laughs> we, we, we had to go back kind of and redesign how things flowed from the beginning. Uh, is this your this is your uh, report? That's the final paper, yes. I do see a paper right Oh, that was in the, uh, I'm sorry, that was in the, uh, okay. I think it, it should be in here and it should be very clear. Okay, I, I didn't, uh, there was a, a link to the pen for the oh, presentation, yeah. so I didn't know if I needed it for the yeah. as well. But, <coughs> um, so yeah, I, like most people come <coughs> this class, I know. That, that, that is a very good, uh, uh, the fact that you're doing uh, largely everything on the client side, right? That is only the um, uh, way many people have gone, and that is um, pretty much state of the art uh, way to go, and which is wonderful. Yeah, and uh, that, that simplifies a lot of challenges for most of us. And it, uh, this, that's necessary for most of you making things dynamic as you have right now. Any questions? I think. Um, uh, from an idea of concept, the fact that you are using the personalized information from different lights, the fact that you then go on to get uh, uh, data from other service. Um, uh, did you uh, consult eventful? I'm sorry? Eventful.com? No. What site do you get information from? Uh, Zenhance? Okay, yeah. 